Hello, I'm Jared Taylor with American Renaissance, and I'd like to talk about the reality of race. It's fashionable to claim that race is a social construct, an illusion, with no basis in biology. Craig Venter, who became famous for sequencing the human genome, claims that, quote, the concept of race has no genetic or scientific basis. In 2011, even the Museum of Natural History in Washington had an exhibit that claimed to, quote, question the very concept of race. Well, common sense tells us this is wrong. No one could possibly mistake a Scandinavian for an Australian Aborigine. It took tens of thousands of years for those differences to evolve. The idea that race is some kind of illusion is so obviously wrong and stupid that only very intelligent people could persuade themselves that it's true. So, where does this idea even come from? It's based on the fact that there is more genetic variation within races than between them. 85% of human genetic variation is found within any given race, and racial differences account for only 15% of genetic variation. But that does not mean that race is an illusion. That 15% difference between races is important. Consider the differences between the sexes. What you see on the screen are the 46 chromosomes that make up the human genome. Do you see that stumpy little chromosome in the lower right-hand corner? That's the Y chromosome. Men have it and women don't, but otherwise they're genetically identical. That's a very small genetic difference. But look at the physical differences between the sexes. Some are absolute. Women have organs men don't and vice versa and other differences are like the differences between races. Height, for example, is controlled almost entirely by genes, and we know that men on average are taller than women. However, the range of heights for men, from the shortest man to the tallest man, is much greater than the difference in height between the average man and the average woman. So there is greater variation within the sexes than between them, but that doesn't make the sex difference in average height go away, does it? Anyone who claims race is an illusion would logically have to say that dog breeds are illusions. 27% of the total genetic variation in dogs is between breeds. That is more than the 15% which is the variation between human races, but it is still correct to say that there is a lot more genetic variation within dog breeds than between them. But look at the tremendous differences that result from that 27%. Dogs can be strikingly different in appearance, temperament, lifespan, and susceptibility to disease. These differences are simply an expanded version of human racial differences, 27% versus 15%. If race is not a biological reality, how can you tell someone's race just from his DNA? A classic 2005 study led by Dr. Neil Risch of UC San Francisco looked at the DNA of 3,636 people who were white, black, East Asian, and Hispanic. His team could distinguish race with 100% accuracy using just a tiny piece of the genome. They could even tell Japanese and Chinese apart. Can you tell them apart? In 2013, Purnima Kumar of Ohio State University discovered that you can tell someone's race just from looking at the type of bacteria living in his mouth. As Dr. Kumar explained, quote, ethnicity is a huge component in determining what you carry in your mouth. There are race differences in hormone levels, gestation time, rate of development, brain size, eye size, genital size, hair type, bone density, fat distribution, age of puberty onset, 
lifespan, twinning rates, myopia rates, disease rates, etc., etc. These are biological facts. They're not sociological constructs. As just one example, Dr. Mitch Roslin of Lenox Hill Hospital in New York found in 2013 that if you put white and black women on exactly the same diet and exercise program and monitor them closely, white women lose more weight than black women. It's because black women have slower metabolisms. Dr. Roslin's conclusion, quote, there are racial and genetic differences in obesity. These things are real. Well, doctors understand this. The FDA has approved a heart failure drug called Bidel, but only for blacks who do not benefit from conventional heart failure drugs. In 2013, scientists at Thomas Jefferson University found that the formation of blood clots follows a different molecular route in blacks compared to whites. This contributes to higher rates of heart disease and lower survival rates for blacks. It's because of medical differences like these that there are even diagnostic tests that are tailored to specific races. In some cases, it would be outright malpractice for a doctor to pretend that race was an illusion. It's been recently discovered that Homo sapiens mated with Neanderthals, maybe 60,000 years ago. Everyone on Earth, except for Africans, has up to 3% Neanderthal genes. Now that's a racial difference right there. One Neanderthal variant, as it turns out, that's common in American Indians, appears to make them 50% more likely to get diabetes. And I haven't even talked about sports. In the last seven Olympics, not just every winner, but every finalist in the men's 100-meter dash was of West African origin. The long-distance running events are crushingly dominated by East Africans. That's an impressive record for a social construct. So your instinctive understanding is correct. Race is real. As Ernst Meyer of Harvard has pointed out, quote, those who subscribe to the opinion that there are no human races are obviously ignorant of human biology. So why do people push this silly idea? I think there are two reasons. One is to persuade white people that immigration and mixed marriage mean nothing. It doesn't matter if whites are replaced by non-whites because we're being replaced by ourselves. And if we marry outside our race, it's no different from marrying white people. The other reason is that many people are afraid that if there are races, and races are different, that there could be race differences in intelligence. Listen to John Horgan, writing in 2013 in Scientific American, no less. Quote, part of me wonders whether research on race and intelligence should simply be banned it seems to me to have no redeeming value. Scientific American is afraid of science. Well, I'm not afraid of science. And I have made a video on this very important question that you can find if you look on the internet for Jared Taylor Race Differences in Intelligence. I hope you'll watch it. And thank you for watching this video.